Live from the NBC Montana studios, this is NBC Montana Today. We're so glad you're staying with us as we continue live at 5.30 a.m. I'm Heidi Miley. This half hour, we're keeping you up to the minute on a number of wildfires, including the one burning west of Stevensville. I have new infrareds on it and the Johnson fire. Also, new potential buyers are unveiling plans for the historic Holland Lake Lodge in Condon. Uh, but we have another surprising twist and hear what the neighbors grilled the potential buyer about. And then later, Democratic candidate for governor Ryan Bussey will be joining me live at 6.30 to answer my questions on a number of issues. Well, the time is 5.30 and we are starting out with clear skies around western Montana. Temperatures 40s and 50s may find yourself reaching for a light jacket in Butte. That's where it's 41 degrees, but we are going to heat up as we move through the next couple of days. In fact, high temperatures good 10 to 15 degrees above normal by the weekend. We had some showers and thunderstorms yesterday. Radar looking good with the exception of central Montana, where we do have a little shower pop it up this morning. We could see a couple of isolated thunderstorms east of Butte into the afternoon. But for the most part, we're going to enjoy a ton of sunshine. Day planner, Missoula, 72 at around noon, 83 as we head into that 5 o'clock hour. Uh, for Bozeman, your day ahead looks pretty good with temperatures in the 60s at noon, 70 in that 2 o'clock hour, 76 at around 5 p.m. today in Bozeman. Heading into the weekend, a big warm up but how long will it last we're looking at your 10-day forecast coming up in 10 minutes hey, thanks Brooke a new infrared flight overnight on the fire one mile west of Stevensville shows it's grown 474 acres to now near 2900 intense heat is feeding growth to the northwest between Sherrick Creek and the ridge line to the north and also around St. Mary's Peak Road to the south Commanders are worried about the fire taking hold in the McCullough Creek drainage. The fire did spot onto the north slopes. The sensors found in the upper part of that drainage, but firefighters and helicopters are working intensely there with hand crews even working through the night to try to stop it from getting in that drainage. Now that same infrared flight also made it over the Johnson fire, finding 515 acres of growth to bring that one to more than 4,300. The sensors found many small fingers and spot fires of intense heat outside the main perimeter to the north. We call those spot fires. There's also growth to the east and southwest. The operational plan says our wind and changing weather will continue to challenge the containment lines. Crews will keep trying their burnout operations. And right now I'm looking at the State Department of Transportation current conditions map and it still has parts of Scalcoho Highway closed in the Sapphire Mountains between Hamilton and Phillipsburg. Firefighters warned the Daily Fire did cross over Highway 38. Both the Daily and the Railroad Fires total 260 acres in steep, excuse me, difficult terrain. Firefighters expect them to spider out so it's hard to say you know which direction it's going it just goes out in a spider shape the stretch of the Scalcoho highway from the black bear campground to the top of Scalcoho pass is shut down i also checked 12 miles southwest of the town of lincoln this morning the helena lewis and clark national forest reports crews are still cutting out fuels around homes along the north fork of prickly pear and the mcquithy roads the Marsh Creek fire is still at 88 acres. It's been growing to the east. It's too dangerous for hand crews to go direct, but they will be keeping uh, the protections on the homes. They'll focus there and aircraft is over the actual fire. <clears throat> All right, um, we are checking a new development this morning with Holland Lake Lodge. A, there is a man and a nephew coming forward to possibly buy that, but also there's a late breaking development of a potential different buyer. Part of why I'm here and want to hear from people. Holland Lake Lodge is up for sale. Eric and Thomas are looking to buy the lodge to make good use of it. I've heard we need to keep it accessible for locals, it can't be super expensive, it just, it's valuable for the locals, I think that's super valid. 
Eric and his nephew Thomas hosted an event at the Condon Community Building Tuesday afternoon to invite members of the community of Holland Lake and members of Save Holland Lake to come ask questions regarding them being potential buyers. I'm an inclusive person. I want to include the community to the degree that the community wants to be involved. Backlash occurred during the meeting with questions like, what are your direct plans and how is this going to affect the community, as well as whether they have any relationship with the company Powder, which previously attempted a controversial expansion proposal at the lodge. I pulled Eric aside to ask him myself. The reason I'm interested is because it's a old, historic, beautiful building in a beautiful location with birds and animals and uh, peace and quiet and, and, and I want to preserve that to the best of my ability. According to Eric, there is no personal connection with him and Powder. Thomas is connected to the CEO through their friendship. During the two hour long meeting, the president from the stewards of the Swan Valley nonprofit spoke up and surprised everyone with what she had to say. And we are very close to ourselves making an offer. I pulled Grace aside to ask her why her local nonprofit should be the new owners of the Holland Lodge. Montana is being changed so quick. So I feel in order to control where we live on that change, we started the nonprofit so we can have a say so it doesn't blow out our proportion and big money doesn't come in and change our way of life that we love. The meeting concluded after two hours with members of the community going up to Eric and Thomas to still ask questions. I'll continue to follow this story and report back once more information is received. Reporting at Holland Lake Lodge, Sadie Risen, NBC Montana. All right now to Belgrade, city manager Neil Cardwell shared the latest possible dates to correct the city taxable value error. By September 16th, the Department of Revenue could submit a finalized certified value for the city. Apparently something went haywire before. The city officials would have until October 2nd to submit their mill levy calculations and budget to the Gallatin County Commission. By October 15th, Belgrade City Commissioners would have to adopt the budget and levies and send information to the Gallatin Commission for approval. But the state officials say it's not a guarantee the taxable values would be fixed in time. Stay tuned, we'll keep you updated. And Central Valley Fire in the Belgrade area is feeling the challenges of a failed mill levy last year. It first proposed a 30 mill levy, but voters shut that down. The department struggled to recruit and keep firefighters. Also, it doesn't have enough money to operate and is leaning on reserve funds for day-to-day -day services. Officials say the new updated mill levy is more dialed in and the ask for voters is critical. With where we're at and with where, where our board is, we wouldn't be asking for it if, if we didn't truly need these funds. But if we're not successful in, um, in this election, we're definitely looking um, to see there, there will be impacts to the services um, once those operational funds run out. Community of the updated mill levy. Also in southwest Montana, many Bozeman residents are concerned about the issue of housing affordability. Controversy surrounds a new ordinance and its deep incentives for developers. City officials will give two presentations on Monday, September 23rd. One will be at noon at the Ellen Theater and the other will be at 6 p.m. at Gallatin High School. You're welcome to come ask questions about what Bozeman is doing to fix housing affordability and supply. All right, Chief Meteorologist Brooke Foster is standing by live for us. How's our Wednesday looking, Brooke? You know, Wednesday is starting out with clear skies and cool temperatures. We are in the 40s and 50s after all this morning, but by the afternoon, temperatures are going to warm up even warmer for us by the weekend. 538, you're taking a live look. It's Kalispell from our Sportsman Ski House weather camera. We do have dry roads to start and will likely stay dry all the way through the weekend. So if you have any outdoor plans, things are looking pretty good. 49 right now. We'll be at 73 as we head into that noon hour today, upper 70s to low 80s. Missoula, a little hazy out there. It's our Clearwater Credit Union weather camera. Air quality 
uh, definitely improved as that trough of low pressure moved in, but we could see a hazy sunshine by the end of the week on into the weekend. We're at 54 right now, dropping to 50 in that 7 o'clock hour. We'll hit 70 by around noon today. High temperatures getting close to the 90 degree mark by the end of the week. We'll take a look at your 10 day forecast coming up in 10 minutes. All right, thanks so much, Brooke. Also coming up, a state Senate committee is weighing the primary election recount in Butte. But right now, still a dark look over Polson. This is our Quituckneck Resort and Casino live weather camera. Brooke, we'll have your 10-day forecast coming up in our next segment.